Hey everybody, it's Cindy Matalucci, your host of The Pulse and live with Cindy. Today is Friday, January 17th. We are halfway into January. We have an amazing show lined up for you today. I have a co-host because I've got the flu. So my guest and co-host, Windis Fernandez Brinkhorn from Trilogy Financial is stepping up to the plate. How are you? I'm excellent. How are you? We're well, you're sick, so <laughs> never mind. Don't even answer that. She comes onto the set today, and I'm like, I need you to be my co-host. And she's like, well, guess what? I'm kind of feeling sick, too, so bear with us. We don't know what's going to happen. I'm overly medicated, but it's okay. So you guys, before we get started with the show, we have a great show lined up for you. I have to thank our sponsor, Coffee Ambassador, who oh. we love. Yes. Thank you. Product placement. So Coffee Ambassador, they are amazing. We're actually drinking tea today because we're under the weather. So they do tea and they do coffee. Coffee delivery at its finest. They're in Sereno Valley. They've been in business for 50 years. We love them. So thank you guys so much for keeping our guests caffeinated as well as our team because we need it. And then you guys, I also want to tell you about our new episode of the TV show, um, TV show airing on Thursday at 4. It's going to be all about transition elevating your business, so I can't wait for you guys to tune in at 4 p.m. next Thursday for our new TV episode. And then next week, you guys, on the live show, I'm so, so excited to announce our guest. We have got Christopher Sonnen from Sonnen Law. He's been on our show before. He is a divorce and family lawyer. He specializes in bankruptcy and complicated family law. He's really great. He's in Bankers Hill. So we all know, I'm, last time he was on the show, everybody was, had so many questions about bankruptcy. So if you guys have questions for Christopher, let us know. Hit us up. We'll get those answered for you. And then, you guys, our flowers, you know our set flowers are going to be done by Michelle Weiss. And So She Designs is the name of her company. She's going to be on the show next week, and she's going to be showcasing her gorgeous faux flower arrangements. You guys, these are super elevated. They're not, they're not Michaels. I mean, I love Michaels, but these are really, really nice. You can elevate your home. You can elevate your business. She's going to tell you her story, how she got involved in everything. So that's next Friday. So tune in next Friday. Okay. So before we get into financial planning, which you are the expert of, <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit about the flu, you guys, because it's been crazy. I mean, God, it's... Everyone has been so sick this year. I know. I mean, it's like everyone I know has been sick. There's been 5,000 cases in San Diego. I heard nine deaths. Nine deaths. Yeah. I know, you guys, nine deaths this year from 45 years old to 88 years old, which is young, I feel like, for the flu. Um, have you guys been suffering at your house? You know, I got sick um, over the holidays, but it was like only me. The kids didn't get sick. So I guess... Because I was going to say, you have kids, and they must bring home stuff. <laughs> yeah, but this time, it, I got it just because I had allergies, and I think that it snuck in when I was having some allergies. But they've actually been really sick, so thankfully, it's, it's, I would be sick over them. So I have to ask you, your husband, Kurt, does he coddle you when you have the flu? No, <laughs> no, but he just gives me space. I don't need coddling. I just, I just need space. That's all. So that's so funny. So Israel's probably laughing. Israel's had it for like a week. He had a different strain of it, though. I have like a completely different strain. I have more of like the sore throat. He had more of the head cold. But I was saying to him last night, I'm like, you need to coddle me more. I think you need to like wait on me and make me yeah, soup. Yeah, but if, if, you, if he wants you to, you have to coddle him. Like, I, I'm not willing to coddle Kurt. So, oh, so that's this what is it is. A, <laughs> if he no, coddles like, you, you have to coddle him back. It, yeah, it's not going to. No. You have to reciprocate. Well, okay, so Tamiflu, you guys, I guess that's the only thing that gets all the strains, but um, soap and water, they say, so wash your hands. I wash my hands excessively. Apparently, it didn't work this time, but anyway, okay, so that's, I want to talk a little bit about the flu. The other thing I wanted to, to talk about was a trend. Um, do you have Spotify? Um, no, I still use Pandora. Pandora? <laughs> I like my Pandora station. <laughs> so you guys, there's a trend, and you'll get this because you have three dogs. Um, Spotify, they came up with a playlist for your dog who's lonely and at home. There's not, they can't be lonely. There's three of them. Well, well, <laughs> so this is probably for the people who just have one dog, the smart people out there <laughs> who didn't like have their dogs multiply in their house. Well, I have two dogs, but they just chew when we're not home. But I think it's kind of cute yeah. that they curate this like list for you on Spotify for your dog. They also have like TV shows now for your dogs. They have dog TV, which I did look into um, because I wanted to leave something on to create noise because I felt like they would be less anxious when we were gone. But I haven't. I haven't paid for any of the packages. I've just used the free stuff so far. That's the things that we think about with our dogs and our kids. I love it. Well, anyway, those are some trends I just kind of wanted to talk about today. All right, so let's dive into you because I just love, you've been, you said 17 years with yeah. Trilogy Financial. Yeah. Feels that, that sounds like a long time, 
but it doesn't feel like it's been that long. It's so amazing. And you really provide people with the guidance they need to stay focused on their financial goals, which I love because it's sometimes it's hard, you know, to stay focused. Can you tell the viewers a bit about what you do and what Trilogy does? Absolutely. So financial planning is, in my opinion, needs to be very individualized. So that's really what we focus on is trying to understand, you know, what's driving someone, a business owner, an individual, a family, what are their goals, what are their obstacles. So financial planning to me is really about overcoming the obstacles and creating a vision for what your future, mm -hmm. want, what you want your future to be, and how do you want to get there financially. Well, and I love that you say that good planning is progress, not perfection. Yeah, absolutely. It's the baby steps. Like, I, I saw a client last night, and to get to where she wants to go, we have to, we have to save a lot of money. Well, we don't need to start saving a lot of money. We just need to start saving, mm -hmm. and, and we'll get there. Baby steps. It's all about baby steps. So I have to congratulate you for being number one in the company in 2020. It was for the 2019 year, but 2019 we, had our, we had our big gala in early um, in 2020, and it was great. That's it's amazing. Awesome. And you lead a huge team. How many people are on your team? So I think there are, I think we're at 15 right now. Um, two advisors who are more part-time-ish, and then the rest of the team's full-time and growing. It's awesome. And what I love, too, is it's a male-dominated industry, but you just are killing it. So I have to awesome. just give you kudos for that. Thank you. <laughs> I had to put that one in there. So, okay, so we're, let's talk about financial goals, right? Because when it comes to goals, what can we do to stay on track? What is it? Is it budgets? Is it retirement? I mean, what, what can we do? Well, I know I've been on the show before, so I don't want to sound like that repeat broken record, mm -hmm. but I do talk to a lot of business owners, small, medium, and large. And um, regardless of the size of the business owner or how much money someone has, many people don't understand where their money goes personally. Like, you get your profit and loss for your business, you're running a business, you've got employees, you have attorneys for that, you have bookkeepers for that. But very rarely do you actually have any clue, like how much you spend on food, what it takes to, you know, put gas in the car. So we do feel like the foundation of financial planning is understanding what your lifestyle takes. This isn't about regulating your lifestyle. This isn't about putting you on a budget. It's just about accepting what it means to be you, so we can plan. It's true because I I was going to Sprouts, I was going to Costco, I was going to Trader Joe's for grocery shopping, and you just don't think about what you spend. And then one time I was like, I'm just going to sit there and really add up everything that I'm spending, and it was crazy. I mean, just those little things. Or they say the Starbucks coffee, right? Like well, every but day. But again, <laughs> it is crazy. But but you I might... don't want it to be like, oh, that's crazy. You need to spend you know half that. That's mm -hmm. not what we're trying to accomplish because. You know, if you make good money, there's no reason for you not to be able to enjoy your money. It's just we want to make sure that you know what it takes so that you know how much you need to save so that when you retire, you don't run out of money. It's important. Okay, so let's give tips to the viewers how to get back on track if you mess up, right? Or if there's a personal well, obstacle. Well, this is a good time for that because this is also, you know, the beginning of the year, so it's a good time to try to lay a foundation, all those New Year's resolutions, get back into the gym. There's a lot of free um, free apps out there like... Uh, mint.com or you need a budget that can help you start to get back on track but also it's about you know having a partner like a financial planner that can step in it's like when you go to the gym when you have a personal trainer someone who can hold you accountable it helps you stay the course so I mean you've endured obstacles I mean your husband was a cancer yeah. survivor you went through that in 2007 and then adopting two kids I mean you've been through you've had a lot of struggles and you've gotten through them um, what is it that how do you persevere how, when you have something come up like that financially it could really set you back, right? Well, yeah, and I can talk a little bit more about it from last year because I last year was the first time you know I ever had to take PTO because even when Kurt was sick, um, I was able to work through that. But my kids were sick last year in a very unique way that required me to really step away. Mm -hmm. And it is difficult because a lot of people are working jobs in which when they're not there, they don't get paid. And I'm very lucky that I was able to still maintain. So... I guess I'm lucky I picked a profession that can allow me to work remotely as well. Yeah. <laughs> so the perseverance side, I um, am incredibly capable of compartmentalizing. Okay, this is what I'm doing right now. I'm going to get through this. Oh, look, there's 10 minutes of downtime. And I try to, I, I am able to manage a lot. So that management has helped me really get through a lot of the hard spots. Okay. And I do rely a lot on my team. You know, I did say we have an office of 15, 13 of which are growing advisors who are very supportive. We've created an extremely supportive team environment. So if anyone needed to step out of the office, like we're there to help maintain their business, take care of their clients so that they can do what they need to do. And when they come back, everything is just continuing to run. But you can help people really set them up to be prepared for mm -hmm. something like this. That's Absolutely. what's really important. 
It is, and it, it does help to be able to show them how to set themselves up financially so that if something happens and they need to step away, they're prepared. I love that. Okay, so we were talking about this before we went live, trends that we need to know about in the financial world, and you were telling me about the SECURE Act, which I didn't know about. Right, so the SECURE Act is something that is starting this year that did a couple changes. The one change I really wanted to, to highlight for people is you know you may inherit money at some point in your life. If you inherit money and it comes to you in the form of a retirement account, you used to be able to take a small dollar amount from that retirement account for over the course of your whole life. We called it a stretch beneficiary IRA. Okay. In the SECURE Act, it actually caps that at a 10-year payout. And the reason that's important is if you're getting you know, obviously this would be a big IRA to pay ten, you know, fifty thousand dollars a year. But let's say you do inherit a big IRA. When you get money out of an IRA, you have to pay its income tax. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden you're getting twenty thousand dollars a year in additional income and often the taxes aren't being withheld when that's coming to you. So it's just being aware that the regulation for inheritances has changed. It gives us two talking points. One, to prepare people when they're receiving an inheritance to plan for the taxes appropriately so they don't get caught with the IRS. Ooh. But the other aspect is if you can convert some of your retirement, your traditional money to Roth money, when the Roth passes to your heirs, it doesn't create a tax situation. Ooh. So it really helps us focus on maybe a little bit more financial tax planning with some of our retirees. Well, and there's so much that comes into play, and that's what I was going to say next is you work with kind of anyone, right? So you right. offer different <laughs> types of programs, and, and you can really tailor that. So somebody might have an inheritance, and that might be a great person you know, to work with. But... Let's talk a little bit about the types of clients that you work with. Business, college planning, well, right? Well, I mean, for the it's... firm is that, you know, we really do not have asset minimums. You know, okay. I, I, some, I had a mortgage broker call me today and say, hey, look, I've got this, this individual. They're in their 20s. They need a financial planner to sit down to help get them on track for their first home. I have a team. Some of my advisors are one to two years into their financial planning career. They have plenty of knowledge and expertise to be able to help someone like this. So because of the bandwidth of our team, we are able to help people no matter where they're at in their life. Well, and one thing that I love that you do is the financial compatibility quiz for couples. Yeah, That is, yes. I mean, that everyone needs that so right that now. Actually, <laughs> it's so funny to hear you say that because the financial compatibility quiz went down in 2019 because we have a new marketing department. We brought it down. We're actually in the process of relaunching it. I, was, I saw that. No, I'm seriously, like, everyone that's that I so know funny you needs bring it up to do that. Because we took it down to take a pause and financial compatibility is so intense with couples they don't talk about it enough. And then that's and then what it happens with a divorce. Of it tension. could be a divorce yeah, issue. Yeah, got a couple of clients that. kicking <gasps> off 2020 with that. Which is why when you said you had someone who did some tough financial, our family law stuff next week, I was like, oh. Son-in-law. Yeah. They're amazing. I know, but I saw that and I thought, you know what, financial compatibility, because people don't think about that. It's almost like, you know, getting pregnant or something like that. You don't think about, hey, I might have an issue, and then you wait until you're trying to get pregnant. I feel like it's the same thing as like a a couple's thing. You don't talk about that stuff, and then you get married, and then it's like, do we share money? Do what we combine do we our bank accounts? Do we keep separate bank accounts? And the bottom line is there isn't, there isn't a right mm -hmm. answer. It's going to be what works for you as a couple. It's almost like a diet. There's so many diets out there. All the diets work for the right person. Right. It's about finding the right um, compatibility for you. Well, and then the other thing I was going to say is you do decision coaching or decision center, right? Um, yeah, so, so our programs. financial planning process... We, we will sit down, we do, so you can come in and say, hey, look, I don't have assets, I want to build assets, and we have a whole budget program that we'll sit down and do, and that has, uh, that's actually a very inexpensive program that we can sit down and do to get the budget on track. Okay. Then some people come to us and they want like a full-scale financial plan, but they don't want to move their assets to us because maybe they have a good relationship with a broker and they just need to get better perspective and maybe they'll use this in the future. So we have a fee for that too. And then obviously we do asset management. Okay, that's great. So something for everyone, and I love it. And she's my financial planner, and we drink wine when we do our yes. finances, which is way good. more fun. So we'll do that next time you yes. come on. So amazing. Okay, so what's the best way for people to reach out to you? Whether they have questions or like a consult, or how do they reach well, you? Well, they can always go to the, the Trilogy Financial Services web website, which is um, trilogyfs.com slash Windis. Thank you, because I was just about to say. Then you can go to San Diego's office, and you can find me. Mm -hmm. 
Lindis is a we pretty unique have, name. We should have that on the screen yeah. actually with your link as <laughs> well. Awesome. So absolutely, that's probably the best way. You know, I obviously have an email and an office phone too. And you'll do like a consult, or you'll talk absolutely. to them. And okay, perfect. And she's in Del Mar, not far from Carmel Valley. Yeah, it's right. It's like right on the border. It works. It's perfect. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks, Cindy. I love her. So any any questions that you have, we'll get you in touch with Windis as well. Reach out to her. You have the website. And then if you guys have a story for us or something that you want to promote on the show, hit us up on social media at The Pulse ST or on our website, thepulsest.com. I hope you guys do not get the flu. I hope you guys have a, Stay healthy. Stay healthy. <laughs> have a healthy weekend. Take your vitamin C. I'm on liquid zinc. I'm on liquid vitamin C right now. I'm on boron. I mean, and I literally... Don't forget to just hydrate. Like, so uh, many people don't hydrate enough. Just drink some water. That too. Okay, well, thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time when we put our finger on the pulse of San Diego. Thanks, Windis. Thanks, Cindy. Thanks for having me. Bye.